Okay, so welcome everyone to our first ever episode of Single Malt Strings. This will be a kind of more podcasting type video in a combination of two things we love. Guitar and whiskey. So roll the intro. Cheers. Cheers, my friend. <laughs> so what we're we on today? Uh, oh. We're on the basic stuff. Yeah. Yeah. The stuff you can get from every decent petrol station. Mm. Fill your car up and drink at the same time. Yeah. No, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> we don't promote drinking. Don't driving. put this in your car. We mean, yeah. don't put this in your car. Okay. Don't go far too fast. <laughs> <laughs> so today we are on the Tamavulin. This is a single malt space side whiskey. I'm, I'm a space side guy myself. Mm. Yeah, very easy drinker. Yeah. You know, it's it's really not too bad for the money. <coughs> the you, of the course, day. you can get better, but you know. Well, this is the first in the series, so yeah, of course so we're, we're going to get better. <laughs> we're starting low. We're starting and low. And we'll work our way up rather than falling down too far, mm. too quickly. So this has a lot of caramel notes in it as well, isn't it? Yeah, but not really like sweetened caramel. You know, no, it's, no, it's still like, a nice bite to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not that. It's not brown because of the caramel. You know. No. So this yeah. is a sherry and oak cask. That gives it the color. That gives it the color. Yeah. They actually like burn the inside of the oak barrels before they yeah edge yeah, the whiskey. They do, they? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. That's where the peaty whiskey becomes peaty because they burn the barrels with peat. Right. Cheaper whiskey, that's presumably just a blow towards, you know, yeah. but you get the kind of jarriness in the, bit of, in the barrel and that will help to give the flavour and the colour to the whiskey. Yeah. Right. Cheers. Cheers. I've already had four sips, so. Oh, right. You'll well. be ahead of me, then. Shall we come to our next subject tonight? Well, <coughs> the whiskey is kind of like the main thing, isn't it? Yeah, but... People want a bit more than whiskey. Whiskey is nice for the background. And we haven't got cigars. No. Yeah, we haven't been to Cuba yet. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll have a word. <laughs> we'll have a word about that. But we start at least with, with a whiskey mm -hmm. and with a nice guitar. A very nice guitar. Yeah. 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 You'll be surprised. It's one of one. I guess we better talk about the bloody guitar then. I know you don't like guitars. But, I don't you know. like. I, I just like getting pissed, don't I? <laughs> nah, not at all. All right, let's uh, let's move on to the guitar. So today we brought something special. Move on to the B-roll.
So what I have here is a lovely guitar made by a gentleman called Frank DeHaan. Do you want to tell us a little bit about Frank DeHaan? <coughs> Frank DeHaan is a chap who builds guitars in the north of Holland in a, a place called Hilo. Um, it's very close to where your family lives, yeah, isn't it? Well, so it's, it is, you know, right up in the north. Yeah, I came, I lived a long time in Holland myself. Um, Ryan's got enough Dutch blood in him too, of course. And um, we love traveling in Europe, and, and Holland is one of our favorite spots to go to. We know several guitar manufacturers. And, although, yeah. it's not technically, uh, although we're Dutch, we're just stuck in our ways. It's not technically Holland anymore, is it? It's no, it's the Netherlands. The Netherlands. The Netherlands. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they've renounced yeah. Holland quite recently, haven't they? Yeah, because people think otherwise Poland. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that one before. <laughs> I just hear that people think Amsterdam is its own country. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, they think Amsterdam. They've gone to Amsterdam and next time they'll go to Holland, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they actually realise that Amsterdam is pretty boring. And just for tourists who didn't realise how boring it was, mm. you know. It's a great city, and lots of good stuff, but You've done it doesn't make times. you a better person. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. So, that's for Amsterdam, and that's for Amsterdam tourism. Amsterdam does some really beautiful museums, but you might not be interested in those. Mm. <coughs> Well, the sex museum was quite fun, wasn't it? That's just a bit of fun, you know. <laughs> just like educational to the kids, you know, yeah. you get all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Go there so you don't have to talk there. about it. They're going to just see it and then they know it all. Yeah. <coughs> Saves you all the embarrassment. To be that. honest, yeah. yeah. Uh, here in, in England, all of the sex education is so, like, so slack. They just need to open up a good sex museum and then... Yeah, I've I, 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 like I, I realised that parents are not allowed to um, discuss the topics of sex education of their children in school. That's weird, isn't it? That's very weird. Yeah. Because it actually started with the parents, you know, they did it first. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move on. <laughs> We're getting super off topic now, but that's kind of what this whole thing's about, yeah. you know, just us... Chatting, Anyhow, chatting shit with some whiskies. Frank, Frank Dahan, Dutch fella, builds those guitars, mainly one-offs. He repeats the, the jack, the same process, but he will make a different one every time. We know Frank for many years, Frank and Ruben, they run the place. They got their uh, guitar making school there as well. So that's uh, the Han Guitar Making School. You can buy courses with them. You can go and build electrics or acoustics. There's several different lengths yeah. of courses with them. And uh, it's, it seems like some of the stuff the students are making are really, you know, it, it's better than a lot of the guitar yeah. making schools you see to this day. Yeah, yeah I have actually people from this country go to Holland to see Frank and learn about making guitars. Yeah. So... That kind of says enough for yeah. it, really, doesn't it? Yeah. And you only have to look at this guitar, and, you know, it's Frank all over. So, mm -hmm. you know, we can say what we like about Frank, but just see the workmanship and the amazing guitars he makes, you yeah. know. <clears throat> and WM Guitars is the only place in the UK where you can buy this stuff. Something to be really proud of, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that just shortly about Frank, about Holland. The guitar itself. This one's the Rio Grande. Yeah. So that's his model, isn't it? That's the body shape. That's the shape itself, yeah. So you might find another Rio Grande, but not in this, in, in, in this version. All these species of wood yeah. combinations. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So if you look from the top down, beautiful headstock, capped on both sides, you know, in the same seal coat you would. And I just want to mention quickly that this logo at the top here, 
Um, De Haan is actually a region, isn't it? Isn't it? In, that's in Belgium, in but Belgium. it's a cockerel. Yeah. Yeah. So does De Haan mean cockerel? It means cockerel. I and thought that, it meant the hen. That is, no, 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 no. No? no. <laughs> okay, so yeah. No, a hen is a female, the hen is a male. Right, yeah. okay, I'm with and you. And now you get the logo. Yeah, so that's yeah. where the logo of the cockerel comes yeah. from. I think actually it's a very elegant logo. It looks yeah. very beautiful yeah. on the top of the yeah. set stock. And uh, of course, the 510 machine heads, which I personally love, 18 to 1 ratio. So you get some really precise tuning out of it. You can get them these days to 21 to 1 ratio, but 18 to 1 is already a really nice number. I personally just feels super love smooth, that. yeah. Very smooth. You can really slowly tune into that note. In, mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to go up and down because you've got too far, you know. Yeah. It is. Uh, and just yeah. the, the way that these are, are shaped yeah. is just stunning, yeah. you know. I, I, I think they're personally one of my favourite tuners, are super elegant, and they look beautiful on the guitar like this. Yeah. They yeah. really do. Well, then further down, we get, of course, old person style bonnet, because tradition still lives high in this, uh, in this industry. Well, I will say, whilst we're on yeah. like, the headstock area, there's a lovely volute on the back here, yeah. which just really like hugs the hand nicely, yeah. and is, is a, got a really nice shape to it. Yeah. I haven't seen many people, I've seen one or two of these kind of volutes before, but the, the idea is just to add more mass where the yeah. truss rod cavity goes, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's a one-piece neck, by the way. It's not yeah. a good neck. And it's got quite a, still quite a steep angle, so you get a really nice break angle from, from your neck to the machine head. So normally they cut off either a bit of the headstock and flip, flip it, it around, around yeah. don't they? Yeah. Or sometimes it's down here on the neck. Yeah. But that's the, the weakest one, isn't it? Well, well, you need a shorter piece of suitable wood, so you know. Ah, I see. Yeah, yeah, it does, yeah, that makes does sense. Uh, economics to it. You know? Right. Yeah. yeah, I've always preferred yeah. the ones on the headstock though to the ones on yeah. the back of the neck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. lower tension area. Yeah, but this having the volute and the one piece is uh, it's just a really nice touch. It's absolutely beautiful. It's yeah. very arty, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Well, then we come down beautiful ebony fretboard. Lovely, yeah. lovely fingerboard. Yeah. The mahogany for the neck is is some really tight grain mahogany. I don't know exactly what mahogany it is, but it looks like kind of Japanese mahogany. It's super it's, dense, isn't it? It's a very high quality mahogany. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And then again, repeated with a heel cap in Shirakoti. Yeah. Yeah. I personally also love, whilst we're on the fingerboard and neck area, how they keep no inlays on the front of the fingerboard except a number 12 on the 12th fret. Yeah. And that is... 12th fret, that's why it's 12. It's not yeah. 19, 12 or 18, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's 12 frets. It's just 12 yeah. frets, yeah. So yeah. there's not much like a yeah. kind of... Um, not for your 12-year-old either? No. no it's too nice. Not, yeah. yeah, give them some shit. <laughs> Tango it. I, I love having a fingerboard with no markers on it, though. Yeah. It just is really elegant and just something on the 12th fret, small, simple, Yeah, it it just works. Yeah. In my opinion, you know, all of this is our opinion, but yeah. Well, you shouldn't need markers, you should be able to play by feel and ear and out. Yeah, and the problem so is, you know is you like, are, you know. if you're learning yeah. guitar and you've got all these yeah. dot markers on the front, yeah. Well, you've got the side dots so you know where you are, but so many people when they're learning, they tilt the guitar a little bit and then yeah. like look over, yeah. but it just promotes really bad posture. Yeah, just so, put your number stickers on this side. And <laughs> yeah. yeah, but personally, if I think on beginners' guitars, like 100 quid guitars, that kind of thing, they should just take all of the markers off the fingerboard. You know, yeah, there's no need for them. You, if no you have side dog markers, you know exactly. You right. want a good posture whilst yeah. you're playing, and, Absolutely. and preferably, like classical yeah. stance, really yeah. lifts your whole back yeah. up. So yeah. it's just, yeah, yeah. yeah. my preference. Yeah. That's why I prefer it. Yeah. yeah. Now, coming down, we're coming to the top. 
Yeah, it's one of the nicest yeah. bear claw spruce I've ever seen. Unbelievable, it? beautiful. It's mm. purely Swiss. Yeah. Um, no, a bear claw, a Canadian. Canadian, no, right. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm just, I don't no. know, they've got no, bears no, no, in no, Canada. No, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 it's a, just a type of striping. It is. Grain in the woods. Yeah, yeah, it's the figuring. It could come yeah. from a, yeah. from anywhere. I, I, Frank did tell us when we bought this, but I can't yeah. remember whether it's Swiss or Canadian. So, mm. there's something else <coughs> special on the top. There's like an 8 degree drop. It's been beveled, so yeah. it's, it's kind of got an arch to it. Yeah, it, it's hard to see, but it, this is not like your standard flat top guitar. Yeah, it's so got a very slight arch to it. It's not a belly like you see on some guitars where the bridge starts lifting the top. This has actually been built with a slight curve yeah. and all the bracing to match. Yeah. So, in the well, not just in theory, in practice, it's a lot stronger, isn't it? Yeah. It maintains... Yeah. That yeah. degree. Yeah, I can handle the tension and the downwards pressure a lot better mm. doing that. But then it takes a lot more skill to actually create it. And it takes yeah. special machines to do yeah. that as well. Because they've got, yeah. they got radius, like, dished out sanding tables where you can... Um, I know that Davina also have something similar, but they're, they're all custom-made machines where they can push the top wood into it very yeah. gently yeah. and be able to sand this bevel in and it's the same with the bracing. They kind of um, piece the braces together, like the X brace, they'll piece that together temporarily before they glue it together and put it on this big yeah. concave disc sander to sand the same degree in before they glue it all. Um, so yeah, it's, yeah, that takes special tooling and, and a proper skill set to be able to yeah. build a top with right. that, yeah. that degree of bevel in. Yeah. Well, there are set. It's simple but really nice. It's stunning, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so nice. It's a kind of broken opera set. <coughs> um, like three quarter yeah, with maple. Some abalone detailing in it. Yeah. Yeah. And I love like this is a thing in if you watch like Master Chef and all the cooking shows yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. Playing with negative space yeah. is a massive thing. It's getting yeah. very popular yeah. in modern day design and. Um, tasty. Tasty, very tasty. <laughs> well, Master yeah. Chef is, yeah. I always drawling when I watch that. But it's lovely having the negative space and like a three quarter rosette, which carries on through with the lining of the instrument. Yeah. So I think, you know, Frank was ahead of the game for a few years when he built this. Yeah. Playing you see it more now with guitars. Yeah. And the rosettes are a bit more adventurous, but yeah. yeah, this is one of the first guitars we came across. That style goes it. Yeah, playing with negative yeah. space and yeah. Well then, struts. So where were we? We were talking about the struts, weren't we? Yeah. All the bracing has been done absolutely perfect. There's no clue marks. All scalloped bracing. Really beautiful, tight, dense. That's something. Um, um, sorry, just to yeah. interrupt. That's something that we see on an awful lot of mass-made guitars is some glue overspill or some, um, what do they call it, like where they splurge out. <laughs> I don't know quite how they call it. Um, yeah, but also that, you know, they, they just make all those components about big, out of big lumps of wood. So you get components that are just, you know, less good because the grain structure isn't nice and straight or you know there's a little knot structure in it or and in manufactured guitars generally a lot of that stuff just get you know chucked in with the mix and by with handmade guitar you have complete control you can take that lump of wood and take this little bit out because that's the perfect bit you know yeah, yeah. <coughs> so the quality control throughout each step on yeah. a luthier made instrument is is just yeah. second to none really because they can they can look at those small details you know yeah yeah um, then the curfling is all done in mahogany and it's back to front curfling so all the gaps all the slots are glued to the body rather than showing inside the guitar so like curfling is the little strip of wood that connects the sides to the back and if you look inside your guitars you'll see these bits of wood with loads of little 
chop yeah. markers out of it. They're they're like really li- they almost look like little individual blocks, but they're not. It's just been cut through about three quarters of the way so that the wood can bend and contour yeah. to the shape of the body. And that gives you a bit of surface area to glue the back to the sides. But this has been reversed so that those little blocks, they face the side instead of the other way around. And I guess that will give you a better contact in a way. Like maybe Yeah, it's a different way of gluing, but it, it's, yeah. it's very neat. It looks beautiful yeah. inside the guitar, yeah. so yeah. yeah. It's very neat. Yeah. Um, yeah, but maple backstrip on it, um, you know, as usual, that's about the best material to join those two panels together. Yeah. It's just really tidy on the inside. Yeah. Yeah, just really super, yeah. super tidy. For the handmade guitar, we always like to see a few kind of things that are not entirely correct, mm-hmm. you know, uh, that, will, that will show that it is a handmade guitar, rather than a guitar put together by computers. You know, and and the robots, because <clears throat> that's what the world we live in now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if we look at a quality handmade guitar, and we look closer at the whole guitar, we don't want them find more than three of those little points. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, we are really picky at things like that. So the the absolutely minor points would will not affect the, the structural or the or the sound quality or the playability of the guitar at all, they're mm-hmm. just the little signs of where a person, you know, might just have this little drop of glue in the corner, mm-hmm. overlooked. Yeah. Well, for instance, a perfect example yeah. of that is, uh, you know, if you look at any old Gibson and the way they yeah. inlaid the logo on the headstock, yeah. so many times you'll see, you know, where someone has, has carved that logo out of the wood and made it more oversized than it needs to be basically <laughs> yeah and then use some black yeah. filler uh to so you get as in. much filler as logo and then yeah <laughs> you spray over the top and polish the thing out no yeah. one ever complains about that kind yeah. of stuff and that's like one of the small imperfections that we might look for but that's how you reach potter yeah it, indeed if yeah. it was a chinese one that wouldn't happen it would be perfect <laughs> yeah because it's all done by machine uh, whilst we're um, on to kind of the interior, I'm pretty certain, I forgot to ask Frank this, but looking at it and looking on the inside, this is a bolt-on neck, isn't it? It's a bolt-on neck. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's got um, the uh, tail block under the fretboard as well. Mm. So you will have that fretboard line will stay straight, whatever happens to the guitar. Yeah. Uh, and, and a lot of guitars... The, the end of the fretboard or dips down or, or even worse sticks up because mm. nobody really pays a great deal of attention it's not a cutaway so this is not a very playable area the same you find in, in fretboard gets really uneven mm. uh, but, uh, in that area but again this one is absolutely perfect yeah. you know so you can play as far as you can get and it will be perfect I actually really like the adoption of bolts on necks on acoustic oh, guitar. Yeah. Yeah. It makes them so easy to work on in the future. Yeah. And steaming a dovetail, or oh, it's terrible, yeah. even worse, sawing the thing yeah. off and making a new dovetail. I mean, they're just jobs that, if you had some bolts in it, you could be done in you yeah. know, no time. Yeah. If you start steaming and or sawing, then it just becomes a, another job on top of a job. Yeah, and there's no real downside to any bolt-on. No, I prefer the bolt-on. They're still really stable guitars. They've got two big bolts on here and one bolt underneath the fretboard there. So it lines the neck I don't think this one's perfectly. got a bolted fretboard because there's no... Uh, yeah, no, you don't see the marker, but... Um, oh, right, yeah. yeah. There's, there's one Allen key underneath that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, if you have any problems with a guitar like this, you whip the neck off in no time yeah. and you can sort those problems out. Yeah. And if it is a, a dovetail joint, then it has to be a fairly expensive guitar to make all that work out. You know? yeah. I will say that the dovetail hmm. invention was way better than the old school mortise and tenon. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mortise yeah. and tenon was just yeah. a rubbish way of 
fixing the neck onto a body. Yeah, of course you need you know. to have the full control of yeah. that angle of that neck to the body. But this being yeah. a bolson would still be yeah. a mortise and tenon, no? With bolts. Um, it's just bolts. It's just bolts, yeah. right, yeah. okay. Just bolts, right. okay. Yeah. Now there might actually be more in there, I'm not sure actually. The masons have a mortise in there. Yeah. But I'm not sure about this guitar. Yes. <coughs> And then if well, we go down on the body, then of course we've got Ebony Bridge, uh, um, um, bone saddle, bone pins. Yeah. The saddle and the pins and the nut are all handmade in house as well, yeah. so they're not just batch parts, they're yeah. made for the specific guitar. And the bridge, I love the way he's shaped that. Yeah, yeah. You still retain a lot of surface area, but yeah. just the shaping of it is, is yeah. so elegant. Yeah, yeah. 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 But. Let's go now to one really important part of this guitar. We've been talking past all the time. The best bit. <laughs> the best bit is the back and the sides of this guitar. Look at that back. It's Ciracote. Well, you know, a few of you might have seen Ciracote before. We see it more in guitars. Um, of course, we've had uh, numbers of years where Rosewood is scarce and there's problems with rosewood and Brazilian well, we, and rosewood you can only get in scrap guitars and we haven't been the, allowed to use Brazilian rosewood no. since the I think eighty four they stopped it roughly. I think it was somewhere in the eighties yeah. where it went completely like banned to use it. Yeah. So if you needed or wanted a Brazilian rosewood guitar that didn't exist, yeah. you would have to go and find plates that were stored or scrap yeah. an old guitar yeah. and reuse those plates. So yeah. it's a very, very expensive wood. Yeah, so now we see yeah. all variation of that same rosewood genus, you know, like, like Santos and Coca-Cola and, you know, yeah. all different types of wood. We still have very good characteristics on, on, on tonal quality and, and hardness. But the Zuricosi is, is pretty much like a Brazilian rosewood, isn't yeah. it? It's just a little bit brighter yeah. from what I remember. <coughs> yeah. The Indian rosewood is by way not as good as Brazilian rosewood. That's why you find extraordinary price differences mm. in all the guitars, whether they're made in Indian or in Brazilian rosewood. And Brazilian rosewood has that really pronounced kind of depth to it, doesn't it? Yeah. And, um, yeah. However, the, it's really oily stuff, so it does yeah. like to split and crack. And yeah, but it bends, it bends reasonably well as well. Yeah. Because this is also, a, you know, a characteristic this wood needs to have. Yeah. You well, know, it needs to be able to be worked to a fine surface. Yeah. It needs to bounce that sound off really well. Yeah. And, it, and it needs to be able to bend without killing cracks or, or little steps in the layers of bending, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, Ciracote is of far greater quality than Indian Rosewood. Mm. And Ciracote in hardness and in tonal quality is the closest to Brazilian Rosewood. Well, and then the other things we already mentioned. Um, yeah, like Santos yeah. rosewood is more like an Indian rosewood derivative, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And you've got Pau Ferro as well. Yeah. Um, that's Good also. Good colour, though. Oh, yeah, color, the, yeah. The, the yeah. graining in it is amazing. Yeah. But yeah. then that's also. Mm -hmm. it, it's exactly the same genus as Indian yeah. rosewood. Yeah. You know, it's in the, <clears throat> that, that species, yeah. that family. Yeah. And, um, but this is not a rosewood genus, is Cordo, Cordia? Cordia, Cordia, yeah. 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 So it's a different type of wood. Completely different species yeah. of wood, yeah. just the tonal characteristics are very similar. Yeah. Yeah. And then the grain looks all, all over the place, but actually it's... For Zirikoti, this yeah. is amazingly yeah. straight. Yeah. yeah, it's still what we call interlocking grain, and normally a piece of wood well, it looks like that would be really hard to work because if the grain goes all over the place it will get smooth one moment and then rip it all out the next Go moment. Yeah, the other, yeah. 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 Um, 
but Cerakoti again is is really good to work. I remember back in the day yeah. when I was trying. This was like way back. I was making some flame maple back plates for a guitar, and I didn't have the bandsaw tensioned enough. Yeah. And I started pushing this block of flame maple through, and this bandsaw just went like a C, you know, following the grain just mm. up and down, up and down. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it can be it can be a nightmare cutting wood straight, yeah. you know, like that. You've got to. Have a really sharp blade and have it tensioned perfectly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But this doesn't have so much of that issue. No, no. no. It it looks like a wood that would have lots of that issue, mm. but actually it's not that bad. Nice. And then it's all offset with nice wooden binding <coughs> and with abalone, little abalone detail in it, and a light wood underneath the binding. Yeah, it looks like a maple. Yeah, or... something like that. Yeah. yeah. So there's a there's a maple purfling on the sides, and then the back and the front, the top, have um, that's not purfling on the top. It's lining, isn't it? Mm, yeah. The lining of abalone. Yeah. 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 So now back to <coughs> what will this guitar be good for? There's so much it's cool perfect. stuff. Yeah. 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 yeah, there's so much cool stuff about yeah. this one guitar, yeah. and I think there's there's probably quite a lot of valuable information in here which a lot of people won't think about or realise. Yeah. So please do you know type away in the comments and let us know whether you think like you really enjoy these videos because we'll just keep on making them and we'll this yeah. is our first ever one so we're just testing out the waters. Yeah. and seeing what will happen yeah. uh, and if you're interested in all the really niggly you know what is the nerve to not lift and the string playing area and all you know all that stuff it's either online on our website or just send us a message and we send you all this this technical spec out mm. you know which we can't just all squeeze in and keep it interesting yeah it's, it it's really yeah. difficult to do that kind yeah. of stuff you just yeah. aim at half Otherwise, it all becomes a number game, you know. And, yeah. You know, you're not going to watch that for one and a half minute. <laughs> <laughs> I, I probably would, but I'm yeah. a bit like that, yeah. But coming back to what this guitar would be a good guitar for. Mm. And it is all about the quality of the top, which is a bit slightly wider grain to, to enhance the kind of deeper notes. Yeah. Where the silicone adds that brightness adds the brightness so yeah. it balances the whole yeah. thing out yeah and what i will say is this although being a, like a grand auditorium-esque body shape yeah uh, maybe a little bit more like an om on the top actually yeah it's but a bit narrower, yeah. it's a bit narrower than an om on the top but the bottom here is really quite wide that gets onto like dreadnought width doesn't yeah. it uh, and um, that's where most of the sound is. You know? Oh, yeah. 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 There's a lot of modern day luthiers which build their sides as stiff as possible. Yeah. yeah. And then make the, the bottom bout here as thin as possible yeah. to yeah. really make the, that guitar project, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, overall, it's, it's a great recording guitar. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it's so beautiful, yeah. you might not want to personally gig it. But yeah, if you would, if you yeah. were to gig it, it yeah. it would fill the whole bloody room up. Yeah, yeah. you know. But this is more of <clears> a <throat> evening with a whiskey guitar and a cigar and a cigar. Yeah. Play yeah. it by the fire yeah. and just mellow yeah. out into yeah. it, yeah. or get it into the studio. Yeah. So very precise playing guitar. Beautiful clarity to its note. Every note rounds off really nicely into the next one. So you don't have that kind of B string or a G string just kind of bottoms out a little bit, you know, it just doesn't get an entirely this guitar is in, in, in a very good balance. Well shall I just Yeah, I think chords, that's where we get to, to now is just to give you a sound sample of this beautiful piece. Because uh we've been chatting about it for a long time. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But we can ch chat about this for, for hours on the, yeah. you know, with, it's passion, I'm sorry. Really nice 
nicely balanced yeah. throughout the strings. Yeah. The resonance goes on for ages. Yeah. Now I'm not sure what to play that's not copyrighted. I've been struggling with this. Well, just just so. just do a few, you know, get. <laughs> You know, that's not the best kind of stuff to play on this, so maybe you'll do some more finger picky style stuff as well. Like a... Go in the classical pose for this one. Oh, the classical pose feels really nice actually, because the bottom belt is mm. just yeah. kind of sitting there and it really does hug the, the leg yeah. nicely. So. Syndrome. Well, I think I think it explains it all. I mean, if you don't agree with me that this is a beautifully balanced guitar, ready for studio work, you know, if you don't agree with us, then Chuck come and show comments. us your guitar, <laughs> <laughs> or argue with us in the comments section. But to be honest with you, like, I'm not a wonderful player. I just play to put a smile on my face. That's what it's all about, is to be happy, play music, play guitar, and just, yeah, be happy. Well, we always say 98% of us have fun, yeah. and the other 2% can't make any money, so... Yeah. <laughs> So that kind of stuff. That like walking bass line really does seem through. Yeah. I need to cut my nails on my fretting hand. They're a little bit long. Don't want to dig into the fretboard. But... I better put it down otherwise I'll just be yeah. playing the guitar for another half an hour. <coughs> I think that's that's it for tonight. Yeah. On I'm... single mouse strings. I hope you enjoy. Look, uh, watching this. Um, it's our first ever episode. Yeah. 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 So and I hope you, you've got a little bit of the technicality without getting into numbers. Mm. You know, because at the end of the day, we're number guys, you know. 
Yeah, we were engineers. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's how we birthed. And, yeah. 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 That's what but it But we're is. there for you, you know, so make use of that. Yeah. And um, I think we'll uh, have to switch up now. <laughs> yes, and then we will we'll get the nice guitar out. Yeah. And we've still got a job to do. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Thank you.